painting now since you were what, 14? About painting since I was about 16. 16. Mm -hmm. But drawing for how long? Drawing since I was about three. About three, okay. <laughs> That's longer than I even knew about. Tell us how it all progressed. How did you get to the place where you felt that you could really draw something? Well, I've always known that I was an artist ever since I was probably about three. Really? Um, ever since I could hold a pencil, really, I'd, I've been drawing. I always loved to do it. I always felt that I was an artist. It wasn't any one thing that kind of clued me in that I was an artist. I always just felt that I was, I was an artist and that's what I was going to do. So it was a visceral experience and you knew from the very beginning. Definitely. Wonderful, wonderful. And not only that, you were nurtured. I was, yes, I was nurtured. My mother was very, very supportive. She always made sure that I had plenty of paper, um, pencils. Um, she sent me to my uncle, my uncle Mike, um, my uncle Mike's house in, in uh, Maryland. And he's an artist and an art teacher. And he, he took me under his wing and became my mentor and taught me how to paint with oil paint, which I'd never painted with before. Um, and really taught me about respecting my gift and, and nurturing my gift. That's an incredible gift in itself. Because most often, the majority of people who don't understand the artistic process or what it means to be an artist will say, oh yeah, that's nice, but what are you gonna do for a living? Yes, I've come up against that uh, more than once. Um, you know, I always hear the cliche about the starving artist and you'll never make any money or you won't be famous until you're dead. Um, and I actually fed into it. At my first year in uh, college, I majored in architecture and realized that that wasn't my calling and, and made the, you know, I transferred over to, uh, to fine, fine art and illustration. Um, and ever since then, you know, I've been happy and I realized this is where I needed to be. It clicked in. You were happy. You knew that this was what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But you did feed into that first. It's a hard thing not to feed into, isn't it? Well, if, if people don't know um, and they're advising you or some people, you know, some of your peers, you, all, you always hear the same thing from your peers. And if they don't know, then, you know, they can't really tell you that you can actually, you know, make a living being an artist. And my mother, she she would support any decision that I made. So if I wanted to become an architect, she said, that's fine, you can become an architect. Or if you want to become an, an engineer, what have you, you can, you can do that. So she was supportive in whichever route that I decided to take. Well, your mother, Emily Gunther, is a uh, visionary, mm -hmm. all in her own right, uh, especially as she deals with the rites of passage and young people across the country. Right. So she, she found a rich groundswell of talent in her own family and was able to to support you in that. Mm -hmm. What was the first piece of art that you sold? The first piece of art I sold was, uh, I think it was a bear. It was a, it was a scratch board uh, bear, a really small painting. I think I sold it for $20 to one of my uncle's friends. It was a bear or Martin Luther King, one of the two. I don't well, which okay. One. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm certain that whoever has that is, it's, it's a prized possession at this point because There'll never be anyone that will be able to get anything of yours for twenty dollars again. I'm certain. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, you've been selling your work now to people that we all know in terms of uh, celebrities. Mm -hmm. Do you want to mention any of those people? Um, well, there are a couple. There's uh, Debbie Allen, and um, who else is there? There's uh, Will Smith, uh, Jalen Rose. He's a basketball player. Uh, Spike Lee. Um, there's a few others, Venus Williams and a few others. Few others. <laughs> Venus Williams <laughs> has my work hanging in their home. And have you ha haven't you had work on on television sets and movies also? Yeah, there was um, there was a piece on the Fresh Prince of Bel, Bel Air for a couple years, um, Jamie Jamie Fox show and the Williams Brothers. And then there were a couple pieces in there's a movie called Set It Off, and the other one was Friday. <laughs> Friday, we all know about Friday. <laughs> Well, so what we're talking about here is not <clears throat> a small gift, and it's not unrecognized. I mean, your work is 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 getting to be well known in terms of your your uh, your capabilities, but you've also branched off into some other areas, have you not? Mm -hmm. Such as uh, children's books. Children's books. By mm -hmm. golly, you know that is just such an amazing explosion. You've had what five books out now? Five books, right, and 
since 99. I think the first one was published in 99. Was this the first one? Mm -hmm. Brothers, Brothers of, the, of Night? the Night. Written by Debbie Allen. And this is a, uh, a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. It's, um, it's based on the Grimm's, I think it's the Grimm's Brothers, uh, 12 Dancing Princesses. And she adapted it uh, to Brothers of the Night, which is, um, it's, Debbie Allen, you know, Debbie Allen, she, it's a celebration of dance. And yes. Instead of uh, having the uh, princesses, she made all the, prin all the girls boys. And the king um, became the reverend, Reverend Knight. And um, the kids, they sneak out to go to the big band ballroom and dance all night and come back and have these torn up shoes and there's a mystery to be solved. <laughs> it's a fun book. It's a really fun book. And of course, the illustrations make it it just make it all the more fun. Yeah, it was funny about that. I was um, talking to, to Debbie, and she said, and I, and I mentioned to her that the um, once we're at the end, Sunday marries the Reverend. The, Sunday is the the magical uh, nanny who comes and solves the mystery of the torn up shoes. Well, it looks a great deal like Debbie Allen, but well, it it is <laughs> Debbie Allen. <laughs> and uh, when when she marries. Uh, Reverend Knight, her name becomes Sunday Knight. And I mentioned that to Debbie, and she, she didn't realize that she'd, <laughs> uh, you know, made that, uh, made that up where, you know, that she became Sunday Knight, and we had a little laugh about I'm sure it. you did. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you did. Well, this is, uh, is, is a great one. This was your first one. Mm -hmm. And was this the second, Dancing in the Wings? Actually, the second was Big Jade. Oh, missed that one. Jardine mm -hmm. Nolan, huh? Jardine Nolan, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Jardine. We're actually working on a second book um, as we speak. And um, what was great about Big J was that I actually took a trip to, uh, to the South. It's a, it's a tall tale based on a slavery plant, a plantation. And I took a, it was, it was kind of like a pilgrimage to the South and I went around and uh, to the different uh, slavery plantations um, just to get a feel of the South and what, what the uh, water, looks like, what the air looks like, oh, if you could imagine, what uh -huh. the people looks like, what the, what the clouds and everything looks like, just to do a research, to, to, to do my own research, to get a feel of what it really looks like and to make it genuine. So being an artist doesn't mean just sitting in a studio somewhere and uh, thinking about what these images are. You, you actually went out and did some research. And yeah, it makes it more authentic when you actually um, have been there, when you're, when you're drawing something or painting something, you have to know what it looks like. And if you're kind of faking it and, and making it up, you can tell when you look at the artwork. <laughs> well, anyone who sees this book will know that you've been there. You've <laughs> been there. You've, you've seen these fish. You've seen these rivers. You've seen these trees with the, uh, the moss on them. You've, you've seen the quilts, the old quilts that the, uh, the women made and used for warmth as well as for beauty in their homes. And slept on them as, as well. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You've seen the moss on the trees. So seeing it is a great deal to do with being able to produce it in a way that's believable. Mm -hmm. What about Dancing in the Wings? Dancing in the Wings, um, well, Debbie and I had such a good time working on the first one, we went ahead and did a second one. And um, she wanted to do something original, and her daughter dances and her daughter's very tall. And uh, I think it's, it's kind of a combination of her daughter's experience dancing, because she dances as well, and, uh, and Debbie's experiences um, in dance schools and, and so mm -hmm. forth. So she, she <coughs> created this character named Sassy, who lives up to her name, and you know, she kind of always talks back. And she's very tall and has big feet, and she doesn't get to dance with the uh, with the other kids because she's so so big she can't she sticks out mm -hmm. you know and, and it's about being yourself and and uh, trying trying your hardest you know and and facing all that adversity that she faces and, and, and in the end she triumphs and the the authenticity of it that I love is uh, is dealing with the self-image mm -hmm. process as we as we grow very often uh, as adults we get stuck you know we, we, we and this isn't right or that isn't right so much so that plastic surgeons are making a fortune off of our uh, misconceptions of ourselves. But mm -hmm. this young lady was able to triumph over what she considered to be was an adversity, the, her, right. her big feet, which happened to be very strong feet, which allowed her to dance well. Right. well this is a great one. It's a great one. Okay. And then there is, uh, which came next? Salt in your Salt shoes. Salt in your shoes. Salt in yeah. your shoes. And this is about Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> How did you get involved with this one? 
Well, the um, <clears throat> the publisher or the, one of the editors at at the um, the publisher gave me a call and said they had a book uh, of, about Michael Jordan written by his his mother and his sister, and I'd been a Michael Jordan fan ever since. You know, I was, a, a, I think, 13 or something. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about huge, that in a yeah, minute. Did you ever see, you remember my wall? I had a huge wall of Michael Jordan. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was, it was a huge, huge deal for me to be able to do the book with his mother and his sister. So um, it was pretty, pretty simple. They just called me and told me they had the book, and, you know, I jumped at it. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, I have known your work um, as being a real lover of, of, of the body, especially as it stretches and moves and flies <laughs> playing basketball, mm -hmm. because those were some of the, the first paintings and work of yours that I saw that then got uh, changed into uh, posters and, and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm certain that you had a great time doing salt in his shoes. You know, it's funny, the great thing about that is I didn't have to go back to uh, the South because I was already there. Okay. <laughs> this was based in North Carolina where he grew up. and. My mother lives in North Carolina, so I went to visit her when I was doing the research for Big Jabe. So I had all the pictures and the reference from that book, so I didn't have to go back. Well, it all works together, does it not? Mm -hmm. And so it sounds as though all of these things are God events for you. Definitely. And I happen to know that you are a man of great spirit, a man of great faith. How does that play into your art? Um, I don't know if it's a, a conscious effort to put it in my art. It's, I think it's a part of me. and. Art is very personal, so it, it finds its way into everything that I do. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the lighting that I um, I use in the in the artwork. It's just um, I, I mean, art is something that that is uh, it's kind of therapeutic to me or uh, for me. So then, I think it it just finds its way into the art that that spirituality. There's no doubt in my mind about that. <clears throat> just the two of us by Will Smith. Uh, I'm certain uh, had a great deal of, uh, of joy for you to do. It's about a, a father and his son. Mm -hmm. And though you don't have sons, I have two girls. You have two, you have some beautiful daughters, <laughs> and I've seen you with your daughters, and I know how precious um, your spirit is with them. So that must have been a great uh, great fun for you to do that one. It was it was great. I used a lot of my experiences um, as being um, uh, a husband and a father, as well as uh, my childhood memories is, you know, being a kid, um, having moments with my father, my mother, my uncles, you know, everyone in my life. It was kind of like the village mm. that raised mm -hmm. me. So every, all of it goes into, um, went into that book. Well, you are having a marvelous journey in your life and with your art. And as I see you developing as a, as a young man, I am fascinated with, um, a piece of art that you sold to me recently, it's at your, your right there, mm -hmm. called Star Stairway to Heaven. Right. Speaking of light and of a spiritual journey, um, can you talk a little bit about what your impetus for doing that piece of art was? Well, um, it was done when I was in college. I was uh, kind of going through a thing where I was trying to find myself. Um, I think I'd read, uh, read a poem, I don't remember the poem, was uh, entitled, but uh, I was just trying to find myself, and this was one of the images that came to me. It, Stairway to Heaven is basically about, um, a pil it's a pilgrimage from the depths of slavery to the heights of spiritual enlightenment. So you see the people at the bottom, you know, the heads are down, it's, it's a bit darker. Um, there's chains, there's even a, um, a skeleton, which is, which represents the the uh, slaves who, the Africans who jumped uh, jumped overboard during the Middle Passage or were thrown overboard. Mm -hmm. um, one of the poems that I read it was a haiku poem by a guy named Wayne, Wayne Slappy. Uh, I don't remember it. I can't. I don't know if I can say it verbatim. But it was something like, in an ocean deep, uh, where char shark and dolphin swim, the bones of slaves sleep. Um, and that kind of triggered a lot of images, so I, I wanted to put that in there. And you said that at the top, a lot of people are looking up mm -hmm. into the light of God, and and along the the journey um, to the top, everyone's helping each other up. 
So the motto, the motto really is uh, lift as you climb. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. We've heard that uh, throughout the years uh, as we have worked with our internal spirituality as black people mm -hmm. uh, that you cannot be where you are without lifting someone with you and of course someone helped you to get where you are. Definitely. Uh, I want you to know what the response was in my home when I took that uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I took that picture painting home. Uh, my, my young people, all teenagers, my grandchildren, are uh, they're kids, you know, and they, they look at things, first of all, with a kid's eyes. And so my granddaughter looked at that and said, what are you doing with all them naked people? <laughs> 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 but I want you to know that this evening when I was preparing to come and I was bringing that, she was making very sure that it was going that to come was back. back. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, because <laughs> she has had an opportunity to look at it carefully and to analyze it. And as she is growing, she just turned 16, mm -hmm. uh, she's coming with a greater appreciation for what it means to be a part of a progression, mm -hmm. a family, a lineage, a right. heritage. And that's exactly what that, uh, what that gives us. So that was done uh, when you were in school? Yeah, I think it was 95, maybe 95, or I'm not sure. Okay, but you just was. released it. You haven't, it hasn't been. Yeah, I've been holding on to it for a while. For Talk a about time. holding on to things. What does that mean to you as an artist? Why do you hold on to things? Well, it's it's very sp special. It's it's uh, it's kind of a part of you. It it represents a, a part of my life that was um, it was kind of a transition point. It was a milestone for me, um, in finding myself. And I mean, d doing paint some paintings helped me find myself or helped me uh, figure out or solve some problems. And this was one of those. This was a, a point in my life when it was it was kind of a, a really I was on a really spiritual high. So I just wanted to, I just, it was kind of difficult to, to let it go, but I knew that um, putting it out there would help other people with um, whatever it is that they're going through. They, a lot of times you look at something and you see yourself in it and, it and it helps you, you know, and this was, I call it wall medicine. It was one of those things that I wanted to give people that they could, they could uh, wall look at and, and, you know, feel better about themselves or, you know, it would help them in some way. I love that, and I want you to know that it has worked its 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 medicinal purposes <laughs> in my household. We don't talk about it a lot, but I I notice how people look at it differently now when because it sits right at the top of the stairs. You can't miss it when you're coming into the house. You know, it's funny. It's, um, I was in Los Angeles yesterday, and I had another print, and I, a friend of mine who actually is one of those who have helped me in in my journey. Um, Tremendously, he's one of the guys that helped me um, get to the DreamWorks studio to work on Amistad. This was the painting that they saw that helped me get the job. You did. You just on. now mentioned Amistad. We, we didn't <laughs> mention that how you worked on that project. Okay. And uh, I've been meaning to get something to him for the longest since Amistad. You know, I didn't really know what to to give him, and I gave him one of the prints yesterday, and and the brother almost cried. You know, because he that's that's what his he feels his purpose is, is to help other people along their journeys. And he's, I mean, that's, that's what he does, and that's what he did for me. So giving that to him, I guess that kind of, you know, put a nice little exclamation point on that. An incredible benchmark in mm -hmm. his journey as a mentor and in yours as a mentee. Can you say anything about gratitude? Because that's what you're talking about here. You are showing gratitude to your mentor. Mm -hmm. What does gratitude mean to you? How, how, do you? how do you experience that as an artist? That's a tough one. Uh, I, always, I always give artwork is, is uh, one of my expressions of gratitude uh, towards those who who are I feel are really genuine and um, and wanting to help not just me but anyone you know uh, my uncle my uncle Mike who who helped me um, of course my mother my wife um, my children I don't I haven't given them artwork I do artwork with them you know, which is which what is a gift. a gift in itself. Yes, it is. You know, for me, actually, <laughs> it's fun. I'm sure it's fun for them. It's really, it's actually. I'm going on a different subject, but it's kind of funny when I'm sitting there drawing with my daughters, and 
and all of a sudden they point out someone they know, you know, it has to be, it, it can't be anyone from the books, you know, it has to be like Barney or something, but mm -hmm. that's what, one of the great things I enjoy about, um, about being a father. But um, it's, it's difficult to express. One of the, the best ways for me to express gratitude as, as opposed to just giving some artwork is just through words and letting someone know, looking them in the eye and telling them that they really mean a lot to me or that, I, that, I'm, that I'm really thankful to them. I said, you know, thank, looking someone in the eye and telling them thank you. You know, I really appreciate this. Or just giving them, sometimes you don't have to say anything. This is you know, true. you're just looking at them and give them a hug, you know. Well, let me tell you something about gratitude that maybe I've never said to you. And it has to do with this particular uh, work of art here uh, that's sitting right here. This was a study that you did of me. Um, it's the only original Kadir Nelson that I have. <laughs> and I'm very, I can't tell you how grateful I am for that. But the whole process was one of, uh, of great healing for me, the beginning of healing. Uh, I came to your studio uh, not long after my daughter had passed away. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was still so numb that I, I hadn't been able to cry. I really couldn't. She, she had not been dead very long. She had left five children, and I was involved in trying to keep them going and keep, keep them uh, in some way intact, whatever that meant after they'd lost their mother. And I went to your studio and we were sitting talking and, and you, were, you were helping me. I wanted to draw something. And so you gave me this little statue, this little African statue. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and I looked at the statue and I started trying to draw it and then I realized that it was a statue of someone who was crying. The scarification was actually tears. And when I got that, I was able to access my own grief. I couldn't stay in the studio with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to almost leap and run. But there was still enough time for you to have uh, watercolored in this study and to present it to me. And I want you to know how grateful I am because uh, grieving is a very difficult process, especially yeah. for someone who's as stoic as I am. And that art got through to me, being in your artistic environment, having a piece of art, and then being in the presence of someone who could allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you to you. Well, you are very welcome. And, and thank you for, for telling me that. I you know, know. I've never told you that before. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, this is one of those times, one of those special <laughs> moments, you know, and we're allowing the whole world to mm -hmm. share it with us. And that's, uh, that's the joy of, of the art of being able to be human. Yeah because that's what my sense of your art is. This is a very special uh, piece that you've done not too long ago, right? Yeah, not too long ago. It was for, um, it was for Men's Journal magazine. The funny thing about this article is that um, the, <clears throat> the article was based on two playground legends in, in New York. Um, one of uh, the guys I know, we, went to bat we, went to, we played uh, basketball at, at Pratt Institute where I went to school together. And the guy was telling me about, you know, <clears throat> the guy who they were writing this article about. And I got really excited. You know, I would have done it for free, you know, because this was about my friend. <laughs> That's you know? exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is called City Heights, huh? City Heights. Yeah, there were actually two in the, in the, um, in the series. But this was the first one. And he's really long and, and linky, like the you know, guys in the painting. So it was, you know, it was just natural to do it that Indeed, way. Indeed, because I think that's your favorite. Mm -hmm. I do. Well, we have been having a wonderful time here together. And I hope that you have enjoyed being with us. Our time is going to wind down here pretty quickly. But I hope that you were able to see the whole show. And if not, tune it again, watch it again. Because what you're able to see here is a, a young African-American male artist who is telling you about his process, about what it has been for him from the very beginning to know that he was an artist, the nurturing that it took for him to get where he is, as well as some of the roadblocks, the, um, the myths that are uh, projected and the things that we're told about what we cannot do that he did not believe and the spiritual experience that he is having as a result of his art. We didn't even get a chance to talk about your wonderful family and the fact that you were recently on the cover of Family Magazine, mm -hmm. I think it was in November. 
but we know that there is much more to be told about Kadir Nelson and his art. So my hope is, is that you will find your way to the bookstores, get the books, find your way to the uh, exhibits. There's one currently at the uh, Museum of Tolerance, of Tolerance mm -hmm. in Los, uh, Angeles. Los Angeles that will stay up until probably April. April. Mm -hmm. And uh, come and be with us again. Many blessings to you. <laughs> <laughs> that was That's bad. it. <laughs>